Okay, so I found myself in a debate the other day with the Mr. Holy Kool-Aid and the discussion on the table. Is religion a net positive or a net negative? Is there still a justification for religion today? And is religion negative influence on society at large? Now, one of the things I tried to do with my time on the floor, and to be quite honest, I can't say I necessarily successfully did it. I necessarily was all that successful. But I tried to point out that the, not necessarily the absurdity of the premise, because I thought that it was a valuable conversation, but the absurdity of coming to a conclusion rigidly on one side or the other, woven into the very fabric of everything we are, woven into the very fabric of Western civilization, is religion in general, Christianity in particular. Now, he countered with, for example, um, he brought up Norway which, according to his telling in the debate yesterday, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, is some sort of secular paradise where everyone's holding hands and there's no hate and everything's great. Now, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a reach, but whatever. Grant, grant him the premise that Norway is, you know, fastly becoming heaven on earth. And it's the thing that I tried to point out, and again, not all that successfully because it seemed to fall on deaf ears and it fell on deaf ears of him and it fell on deaf ears of the four atheists who, who were in the, the, the chat with me, is that the society of Norway was not produced in a vacuum. It, was, it wasn't beamed down from some planet where they did nothing but study Richard Dawkins for the past 2,000 years. Norway is a byproduct of Western civilization to try and remove the Christian influences on even the present day culture of Norway today is an impossible task. Chicken and the egg ad infinitum. Where, where, where do those Christian influences end? Let's just take a university course at Norway today. Even the secular paradise that Norway is today. If you take a university course, let's say you take a literature. You're still dealing with the same culture. You are still a byproduct of the same civilization. If you're going to take a college course in Norway today, gonna, I'm assuming you take literature. Dostoevsky and Shakespeare are going to be two of the people you're going to read. Correct? It's arguably the two best writers of Western civilization. Case of Dostoevsky, how, how, can, you, how can you take Christianity out of, out of everything he is? Every single page he ever wrote. Christianity is profoundly influential in every sentence he ever wrote. Now, was he a Christian? Eh, it's tough to say. Some would argue that he was a devout and committed Christian, and others would say he was a firmly committed secularist. And the, the beauty of his writing is, as we read Dostoevsky, he makes solid cases on both ends of the argument. So it's, it's not really clear. You can't really clearly say one way or the other. He's one or the other. Because he makes pretty, th pr pretty thoroughly complete arguments for both sides in his writing. The only point I'm making is that you can't take Christianity out of his writing. And that's only one author. That's only one author off the top of my head. Let's take Shakespeare. Religion is absolutely, you know, every other sentence of <laughs> Shakespeare. Again, it's not quite clear that he was absolutely committed Christian. He seems to be a Christian of sorts. But you cannot escape the religious influence in Shakespeare's writings at all. There is a divinity that shapes our ends, rough hew them as we may. Loosely translated as, you know, there's a God out there and he is trying to shape us despite our rebellions and our following our own inclinations of our hearts. I could come up with a hundred different quotes of Shakespeare just off the top of my head that are, if not quite Christian, you know, at least religious in a more broader sense. Ministering angel, will thou, thou, my sister, be while thou lowest, while thou liest howling. That's just one. Hast thou prayed tonight, Desdemona? <laughs> That's another one. I can do this. I can do that all day. Hundreds, hundreds of, of references to God. Uh, you know, religion is suffused through, through everything Shakespeare ever wrote. And if you take the whole of Western civilization, again, here's the premise that I was operating on. Religion in general, Christianity in particular, is suffused through the entirety of our civilization. Trying to take it out of the cake, I would argue that that's the hand of God suffused through, our, through the entirety of our civilization, but that's irrelevant. For the purpose of the discussion, we could just say it's the influence of religion. 
And this is what I was trying to point out that with with my references to Jordan Peterson. Again, I'm not so I'm not quite so sure I was so successful. But Jordan Peterson's main premise, one of the main raison d'etre of him doing what he does, is he's saying that religion is absolutely essential to the entire edifice. You take that those ingredients out of the cake, the entire thing collapses. His argument seemed to be that those ingredients are in and of themselves toxic, but those ingredients produced everything that we are today. Even Norway, even in Norway, that's what I said. You go take a college course in Norway. You go to a library in Norway. It's going to be the same books that exist in the library in the United States of America. And if you're talking about the building blocks of Western civilization, Norway wasn't all that pivotal or key of, 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 of a nation in terms of the development of the entirety of Western civilization. Matter of fact, it was a minor player. Excepting Henrik Ibsen, who's a relatively decent playwright. Maybe he was really important in the women's movement. You know, go read The Doll's House, and you'll see how. Debatably, that was the first shot fired in the women's movement. A passionate argument for women's rights. 30 or 50 years before it was considered kosher to do so. That's only one playwright, and that's not, that's not central to the canon. Talk about the philosophical foundations of Western civilization. you got to go to Plato and Aristotle, Theus both. Theists both. Yeah, you can find atheist philosophers, but there's maybe 50 that were really, really, really essential. And of those 50, we, who, who was really foundational? Perhaps Nietzsche. I'm talking of, of, of an atheist. Atheist-leaning philosophers. Perhaps Nietzsche. Outside of that, Sartre, really? Camus, maybe? Heidegger, nah. But if you're talking about the history of philosophy, you know, you can't, you can't take religion out of Kant. You can't. No, you can't. You can't. That's right. You can't take religion out of Kant. No, you can't. Can't do it. I'm not saying Kant was a Christian because, again, that's not entirely clear. It's not entirely clear that Dostoevsky was a, was a Christian. The point is we've arrived at a certain place in Western civilization. And there are, there are, ideologies, there are influences, and there are streams of thought, and there are ideas that have produced where we have arrived at as a civilization today. Foundational. I mean, if you're talking about influence, you, there's, there is no single bigger influence on our present day culture than the Bible, period. In terms of overall influence, it's absolutely enormous. Is it foundational? That's a better question. But that needs to be explored honestly. Is it absolutely foundational to, is it essential to where we arrived at? Because Norway has nothing to do with it, to be quite honest with you. There were key moments in history of civilization. There are key developments. Most of them took place in England. Far more central to the discussion is England than Norway. Who cares what happened in Norway? You know? Honestly, Norway was a minor player in the development of Western civilization. England was, was key. France was debatably key, too. United States. So...